Welcome to a make art every day for a week kind of video. I actually didn't intend on making one of these videos. It just ended up happening. Um, I just filmed to just show you guys like what I've been doing in my studio for the past week. And as I've been looking through the footage, I'm realizing, wait, this is pretty much like a make art every day for a week video because that's pretty much all I do in this one. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoy. It's a lot of fun art making in this um, in this one, I also take you through my complete freezograph calendar making process. I show you like how I sketch and how I take it through the different steps to become a fully finished spread. Um, and I find that process super interesting and really satisfying. So that will be very interesting to see, hopefully. Um, I'm also going to show you some typical studio everyday work. Um, a lot of fun painting in this one, a lot of fun traditional work. I also go see my friend Sarah's new cat. Um, it's a little ragdoll kitten named Miso and he's so cute. So I know a lot of you will enjoy that footage as well. And I feel like we do a lot of good chit chats about art, motivation, burnout, um, passion, and losing passion for art. And yeah, there's a lot of juicy topics in this video. So stay tuned. I hope you enjoy it and yeah, enjoy the video. I started off with this thumbnail sketch because I just thought like, oh, reading could be fun. So I thought like, okay, putting it in like a cozy, a cat in a cozy home library could be cute. Then I developed it a little bit more um, in a pencil sketch because I just feel like pencil and paper, I can just be so much more loose. If I just start directly on my iPad from the thumbnail, it just becomes way too stiff. We're gonna do the same process for today. Came up with my little kitty cat um, thumbnail sketch, cat artist. And I thought it'd be cute to like give it um, like a little rolling card and like a pegboard and... I don't know if this makes sense, but this makes sense to me. When I do these more developed sketches, I just kind of know, want to know like what kind of component components are going to be in the finished piece. Because when I'm making the more developed sketch on my iPad, it's really easy for me to click and drag objects around. But I want to know the most basic composition. Like I do want to make sure that the cat is in the center. And I thought to make the background more interesting, I could put like a city landscape and have them be like a Brooklyn artist. And I thought it'd be cute to make the window look like it has a lot of panels, like kind of how it looks in Fran's studio. So yeah, it could be cute. And maybe like a little bookshelf in the corner if I'm feeling really ambitious. But doing bookshelves in risograph design um, makes my my brain explodes, so maybe no bookshelf. <laughs> we'll see. time for my lunch break but I thought I would do a check-in also just to share like how slow this process is it's been a couple hours of drawing so far and also why I need to take such good care of my drawing hand and wrist during this calendar project I finished the preliminary sketch and now I'm working on the more finalized sketch I basically go th I go through so many different sketching processes but this is the more developed sketch from the pencil sketch I already did. And now I'm working on putting my line art that is gonna be like my final, final line art over that. I this user friendly, so someone else besides me can do it. So, I don't know. I really don't know, but I'm gonna just write this list and see how that goes, because... 
I'm not going to discuss too much about how I prepare the files themselves in this voiceover because I have a lot of videos where I've talked about it already. Um, so I will link those in the description and the cards if you're interested. Instead, in this voiceover, I thought it could be really fun to talk about this like art crisis I had the other day. Um, it was a very like imposter syndrome-y, anxiety-filled um, moment I had that I've since gotten over, but I thought it would be a fun discussion topic for us. Basically, um, it was spurred so funnily enough by seeing a bunch of my art friends do the Artist Way Challenge. I personally won't be doing it just because I find it really difficult to follow um, like task-based assignments like that, um, but I've been really loving seeing people do it and I've been loving Tiffany's um, video series she's doing on it. Uh, but basically I think just seeing all of my friends do this challenge about like unlocking your passion and being really creative and having a really nice and healthy creative practice just caught me like, I don't know, I think it like unlocked some existing insecurities I have had that typically aren't so loud. But basically I was like, oh my God, everyone is so creative and passionate about art but it just feels like i don't have that same passion they do um and i also started thinking about a lot of artists i look up to that have really cool art practices and i was just thinking about how passionate they seem about their work and i was like am i passionate enough about this um and yeah i basically just started gaslighting myself into thinking that i don't really like making art that much and um i just do it for work and it's something that i just get done but like this passion that I should have as an artist, I just don't have. And I got really in my head because I was just like, damn, like I make YouTube videos all about my life as an artist. And I feel like I'm not being, I guess the artist that I should be. Thankfully, I have gotten over my mini crisis and I feel so much better about it. I think once my period stops, I become like a totally new person um, and I'm able to be a lot more level headed. Um, before my little crisis, I was actually quite comfortable with my relationship with art. It's work, but I recognize it as work I deeply enjoy. Um, I really love my job and I get this very specific satisfaction from what I do. Um, but I do acknowledge now that I think my insecurity did come from some like there was some element of truth in it in that i think um there's an element of play missing from my art practice so later in this video i do a bit more experimentation with um some art techniques that i'm quite curious about right now and i i look through some like new art books and that was really fun um but yeah and i also just like really hammered it in my head that comparison is a terrible, terrible losing game. And of course I'm going to feel bad if I compare myself to other people's highlights. And every artist has fluctuations in passion and motivation. Um, some days I'm gonna feel more passionate than others. Honestly, some months I will feel more passionate than others. Um, and that's totally normal. And also the way I create and how like quote unquote passionate and motivated I feel is just gonna be different than other people. The way I operate and the way I think is just different. Um, and yeah, feeling a lot better about it, but would love to know your thoughts on this and if you can relate to any of it at all. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace can help you build a really wonderful website and grow your online business. Today, I wanna to highlight their customer support. Recently, I had a bit of an issue with one of my Squarespace pages and I reached out to their customer support. I got in touch with them pretty much instantly and they were able to solve my problem super, super fast. And they were just very knowledgeable um, about the service. And yeah, I just had such a great experience. Their help center has so many um, topics. If you're curious about anything, you can also hire an expert to help you build your website and get input on your business. There's community forums. Um, and yeah, I just find it super, super useful. Um, it's a great portfolio website and you can also run your online business. So check it out. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Megan Wang for 10% off your first purchase. I think today I'm gonna do some more formatting. Um, I'm pretty on schedule with my calendar. I'm trying to do one spread a week and hopefully that won't stress me out too much. I'm gonna be taking a little break in the middle to do a shop update too. So I'm basically trying to do one spread a week for the next four weeks, have four spreads, send it off to production, get a sample, do the pre-order, and then finish the rest of the spreads. Today is gonna be kind of interesting. I'm gonna pack my Patreon mail today because I haven't done that yet. 
Um, and then we're gonna be hanging out with my childhood friend, Sarah. I haven't seen her in years, but yeah, we're gonna be going over her house. She adopted a new kitten recently, so I'm really excited to like meet the cat. It's gonna be a fun day of meeting cats and just doing some Patreon work and stuff. Let me show you the Patreon benefits for August. I made these in my last video, but I thought it'd be fun to see how they printed. Um, I really like how the print came out, especially like all of the foliage here, I think came out really nicely. And yeah, all the colors came out exactly how I wanted, which is always really, really nice to, to see. And this is the sticker. The relaxing August vibes summer sticker. Recently, I have decided to switch Rover and Cosmos dry food. There's nothing wrong with the wellness I was using, but I was looking at the Tiki Cat ingredients and I kind of like this a little bit more, so I'm kind of transitioning them out. So now they're on Tiki Cat dry food. They eat wet food, of course, most of the time, but for lunch, they have dry food. <laughs> A lot of pet owners will feed their cats like one to two times a day just because like that is what's most convenient. But since Robert and I both work from home, we feed them breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, and that's just kind of what we've been doing since they were kittens because when they were kittens, they would eat like more frequent small meals and it just works for us. So we still will feed them breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Obviously the portions are like what they should be eating. They just eat like smaller meals throughout the day. I know you're beautiful. Oh, thank you. Oh, oh I know. Hi, Hi, honey. Hi, baby. There's a friend here. Oh, itty bitty. She's Be beautiful. I know. Hi, Angel. Oh, my goodness. You're so light. Oh. So cute. It's so soft. Little tokens are so soft. He's the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. He's so oh my god. Tiny. He's so tiny. He's so tiny. My friend wants you. Look at my skeech mellows. <gasps> oh, he speaks a lot. Yeah, this is good. eBay. They just continued. I love the fucking so cool. blind boxes. Oh my god, look at this. This girl be so So where do you get your toys from? Uh a lot of them are from I think well these these are from um these are Tesla. Mini, so I can't. I think that's from Tesla. And now, because I don't live at home, I forgot what it is. He's like Sajao. It's like when kids are like, mm. you know, it's like that kind of thing. Like, I think that's what he's doing. Maybe. Is that where you are? Is that where you are, Miso? Stop biting me again. Oh, he went into my head. He's gonna fall. Don't fall, Miso. Miso. You gonna learn the hard way. Oh! Can you say hello, everybody? Wow, he lets me do whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm me so. <laughs> Welcome to my YouTube channel. I love you. <laughs> oh, by the way, somebody's gonna be coming through the door right behind us. Can you just tell them thanks for us? Sure. Great, okay. thanks. I just right to Can me. You? Yeah, okay. Be careful today. Yeah, I'm not interested. Okay, alright, help her. He's sleeping in my lap. No, they would hiss. Because she's fearless. Spicy? She really is spicy. She's mm. so fearless. Nope, mm.
did you enjoy the cat footage? <laughs> I had a feeling you would. Um, Miso is just so, so cute. He's actually the second ragdoll I've ever met. The first ragdoll was a kitten of this super rich family I babysat for when I was in France. Um, and the cat's name was Opal, like O-P-A-L, which is a cute name for a cat. But because they were French and they obviously had like a French accent, they said Opal. So I, because I had never seen Opal written out, I thought they named the cat O apostrophe P-A-U-L, like Opal. So this whole time I was calling this cat Opal, Opal. <laughs> um, anyways, super, super cute cat. I, I cannot believe that ragdolls just let you do whatever you want to them. Um, and they're just so floppy and chill. Um, my cats could never, so it was super fun to play with me so. I had a really wonderful art date with Cheyenne this week, um, and so we talked about a bunch of really, really fun topics, um, but something she mentioned was just not wanting to feel bad about drawing the same things, and that just really resonated with me. I also feel this weird pressure that I have to constantly be optimizing myself as an artist and like leveling up, um, and I just like, I feel like the best kind of art is, or in my opinion, I think for me, the best kind of art that I create is art that like, I wanna make in that moment. Um, so instead of fighting myself to make like, attempt these, I don't know, drastic backgrounds and feats that I just don't want to make, um, I should just feel okay with drawing similar subjects. And a lot of famous old masters would paint very similar things over and over again. I mean, Degas, who honestly I, I find very creepy that he painted so many young ballerinas, but you know, he was really famous and he basically painted the same thing over and over again. So I don't wanna feel super bad about having very similar subject matter um, and exploring the same things because every art piece you make is gonna be subtly different no matter what. Um, so yeah, I went back to this um, topic that I've been quite interested in this whole year. I mean, if you follow me on Instagram, you probably noticed that I've been doing a lot of roses and flowers and butterflies. So, so I just took some watered down acrylics um, and used it on watercolor paper. And I really, really love um, some of the background texture I got by diluting the gray. I called it a haul, but technically I did not buy the Totoro book. My dad got it for me when I was, I think in second or third grade. I was really young and we were in Taiwan in a nice bookstore and I found the book. I remember begging him to get it for me and I kept the plastic on it this whole time because it was really expensive. So I really babied it. And I remember the other day, like I was like, I think I have a Ghibli art book somewhere in my childhood bedroom. And I found it the other day and it was so much fun to look through. I really fell in love with the pencil and watercolor sketches. Um, recently I have been really into pencil and watercolor textures. I think it just looks so soft and fun and yeah I just want to explore that more because I'm quite curious about it and I really think this speaks to what I was talking about earlier in the video about how passion and inspiration and motivation can just go up and down throughout life. Like there's been a few months where I just haven't felt particularly inspired. Obviously I make art because I have to and it's my job and I enjoy it but I think that sadness and anxiety I was feeling about not feeling super passionate um, 
has gone away for the most part because I'm just realizing like it comes and goes and that's okay. Um, and I think that's really natural. So I got super inspired by the Ghibli pencil sketches but um, I was also really inspired by this TikTok audio that's going around. I don't know if some of you have heard it. Maybe I'll try to find a recording of it and put it in here. Maybe I won't, I don't know. I'm feeling a little lazy, maybe I won't. But it's a Finn the Human going, I'm me again. I feel like it's been years. And I made a comic recently about feeling like myself and that audio just really um, stuck with me. And I wanted to do a very fun, um, whimsical, like more, I guess, more personally meaningful piece about like me looking into like a little pool of water. And I thought it could be very serene and fun to explore um, scale and texture. Um, so yeah, I had a great time. I don't actually end up finishing this piece, but I am really satisfied with a lot of the textures I accomplished. So my plan is to take a picture of this and finish it up on my iPad because I'm pretty sure that I can't really accomplish the level of detail that I would like. Um, but yeah, this little corner that I'm about to show you, yeah, this is my favorite part of it. I love how that part looks. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, it's just like so opposite of what I want. I'm <laughs> like, maybe when I'm 40, I'll feel different. Yeah. I'm done formatting two full spreads. So I did all the illustrations, but making like the little calendar grid and formatting the whole files for print actually takes quite a bit of time, but um, I kind of enjoy all the computer clicky clicky work. So two spreads are finally done. They're ready to be sent off. So I just have two more spreads in the cover before I can send like the finished sample files to my printer. Today, I'm going to work on the cover of the calendar. I think I'm just gonna keep it super simple. I think it's gonna look just the same as it was last year. I might like add some more text in. So I want to do like another cat walking on the letters again, but I thought it would be cute to do this kind of position. I don't know if you can see that.
So I finished the cover. I'm gonna do the, I'm gonna write cat linder instead of cat calendar and then my name underneath. And I'm gonna do that with Photoshop. I really like how I did the border. Um, last year I did it by just drawing a segment and then duplicating it. And it kind of creates this like interesting stamp effect. Like you can sort of see where the design starts and stops. And I don't know, I just think it's a very fun border. You can see that those those brush textures did indeed print um, and the different layers of opacity, I think came out really cool. And here you can see like that line, it's quite subtle, I don't know if you can tell um, where the design starts and stops. And I think it honestly looks really cool. Um, and yeah, it just has a very like hand-drawn quality to it that I, I really like. This is so cute. And then at the bottom, I kind of want to put something like, I would right here. I think that's fine. Alrighty, that is gonna be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Um, huge shout out to my patrons for allowing me to make art all the time. Um, I really appreciate you guys. Um, thank you to you for watching this video and I will see you super soon in my next one.